What's it like having your own full motion flight simulator? Well, today you're going to find out because this is my pride and joy, my Airbus A320 setup. And I'm going to show you around the bells and whistles that make up this amazing flight simulator setup. And then we're going to go for a flight using the fly-by-wire A320. You don't want to miss this. Welcome to my home motion flight simulator cockpit. Now, I posted a few videos of this on Instagram on a new page called The Flight Doc, and it went viral beyond my wildest dreams. I didn't think it would get any more exciting and then Microsoft Flight Simulator themselves shared my reel. So first things first, this is originally and primarily a racing sim rig setup. So as you can see there, that says the car dock somewhere here. And that's my other channel where I do all things racing sim. But you know what? My first love was actually flight sim. So when I was a kid back in the day, I remember playing with the PMDG Boeing 737 add-on when I was like 14 or 15 when I wanted to become a pilot. So um, I failed to achieve my dreams and became a doctor in Instead. In fact, my first ever YouTube upload was flying an FS2004 almost 16 years ago, and it got 387 views in that time. Let's hope this does better. First of all, let's go over the actual controls we have here. So we have got the Frostmaster Airbus side stick, and this thing's actually pretty good. I really like it. Um, it's smooth. Yeah, we'll be seeing if we get something a bit more high-end soon, but for now, this does a great job. Now onto the, uh, the throttles. This is the Honeycomb Alpha Bravo. Nope, that doesn't make any sense. This is the Honeycomb Bravo Throttle Quadrant. And um, this is actually modified. As you can see here, I've got these massive Airbus style levers, and that's from uh, Flight Sim Factory on Etsy. As you can see, you've got the, uh, the speed brake there, which actually really nicely goes into the different idents just like that, beautiful. And then the flap, you have to actually lift and drop down, which is crazy. As you can see, that's corresponding flap levels there, flap zero. And the good thing about this quadrant is that you get autopilot here as well, although I have got the mini FCU coming very shortly. You've got all these different buttons there, You've got autopilot, you have to shift this around to then go up and down on things. The all important keyboard. So those are the controls. In terms of rudder pedals, well, I'm trying to make these work. Um, I haven't had much time recently, so when I get a bit more time, I'm gonna try and make these work. Now, <laughs> what is this big chunky thing? This is actually part of the racing wheel. Just ignore it, this is not for flying. What are the controls actually mounted to? Simlab P1X Pro. So it's the whole like unit of this, which the motion is attached to, and that's this bit here. It's aluminium profile, it's really high quality. The actual throttle quadrant is mounted on this, which I got from Amazon. And actually I'll link that in the description below. In fact, everything will be in the description below so you can buy it. This thing is perfect. And what it means is I can just take it off like that and put it back on when I need to switch to a racing setup. The actual Airbus controller, the, the joystick here is on a custom bit of profile that I've put together with a, a couple of corner mounts and that works well enough. The, uh, the seat is a Simlab Speed one, which as you can see is a racing seat. Lord Lewis Hamilton watching over us. And it, it works really well. It's really comfortable and actually really good for, for flying. Now, what about the screen? So this is the Samsung G9 57 inch ultra wide and it is absolutely bonkers. I absolutely love this thing. It's very expensive, but in terms of immersion, I think there's nothing better than this screen for flight sim because essentially you've got a whole windscreen there in front of you and then use the instruments. Now, speaking of the instruments, this is the Porsche uh, DDU. Essentially, it's something you see in the Porsche Cup and Porsche GT3 race cars. So it's not actually for flight sim, but it's actually a monitor, a 10 inch monitor that's really high quality and it's easy enough to just plug this in via the HDMI and then you can basically you just pop out a window on here. You click those, click that, and then you just slide it across and it goes down to there and it works seamlessly. Now for the other screen, we've got our engine instruments. This is just actually an old iPad. I've had this for a few years, it was lying around. And um, what you can use is an app called Space Desk, which essentially allows you to wirelessly extend your main monitor. So this monitor is extended onto here via HDMI into the computer and onto here via Space Desk. This is really awesome. The MCD or the flight computer, essentially with the A320, you can actually find a website, a link, and I'll leave it down in the description below, where if you are connected on your local system, you can use this like that. And as you can see, it works perfectly well. And again, that's an old iPhone I forgot to mention. That's actually an old iPhone that I just, again, had lying around. Don't judge me, people. Love a good iPhone. Now, the actual computer itself is a 3070 build, and it runs on this. I'm not running 4K on this. I'm actually only running 2K because 4K will make my computer 
explode, which is not what we want. Now onto what I think is the star of this motion simulator. The word is in the name, the motion. This is the Cubic QS210 motion system. It's a three degree of freedom motion system, meaning that you get pitch, roll and heave. I think this is the minimum required to have a fairly realistic experience. There's something ridiculous about having a motion system at home because it completely transforms the experience. Now this thing is super powerful to the point where you need to have this big red button just in case things go a little bit south. But I can tell you so far, things have been good. Now we've gone through the whole rig, it's time to see how it works on a short flight in an Airbus A320. Before we go anywhere though, we need to do the before takeoff checklist, which includes hitting that thumbs up button, subscribing and hitting the bell icon. I'd love to know what you guys want me to do next. Let's go. All right then, we are in the aircraft. So we are in the uh, FBW A320, the fly-by-wire one, which is um, renowned for being pretty good. Now, I haven't really used this that much. I've only really been using it for, oh, like two days. But anyway, we are in the cockpit. We are at the end of runway 14 at the Gold Coast, actually where I live in Australia. Very sunny, warm place. I'm actually sweating in here. And um, we're just gonna do a little traffic pattern. Now, um, the FBW Airbus um, is slightly more complicated than the, <laughs> than the actual uh, Adobo default plane. Despite staring at the study materials for quite a while and having a degree in medicine, I still don't really know what I'm doing, but that's gonna make it more fun. So there's a few things you gotta do beforehand, such as putting in a couple of speeds for the, uh, the takeoff. Now look, I'm gonna put some bogus speeds in because we don't have time to go through all the other stuff. What does the outside look like? Wow, look at that, that is sunny and delicious. We're not going to bother with air traffic control because the default Microsoft Flight Simulator ATC are a bit crap. Um, so we're just going to go for a flight. Now first and foremost this motion system does have the ability to have haptic feedback, essentially vibration motors in each of the four corners. What that means is that you can feel the engine vibration as you're flying around which is pretty incredible. Okie dokie, let's get ready for takeoff. Right, let's go flaps one. Fabulous, we've got flap one coming up and let's arm those uh, spoilers. Let's just give it a bit of juice. We'll get 40% stabilized and we'll get the brakes back on there. Come on, get that throttle up to 40. Fabulous, okay. That's looking pretty stable to me. I think it's time to take off. And let's go up to our flex detent. So in the Airbus, you've got to have the 50% uh, down on the stick till you get to 80 knots. 80, speed is checked. Got a bit of a, a, a crosswind from the left just here, but anyway, technically you shouldn't remove your hands from the uh, <laughs> from the throttle to get to our V1, which for some reason hasn't been in yet. But let's just take off before we fly off the runway. Silly thing, gear up to be at a positive rate of climb. Fine, okay, cool, we are now climbing. As you can see, looking left and right, beautiful. And we're gonna get to our slap retraction speed. That's the gear being up, you can see that vibration just there. Um, and it is just honestly amazing the way this thing makes you feel when you're flying. So we go flaps up, fabuloso. And then we can get this back to our climb detent. Uh, and actually, let's just it may aim for a speed of like, I don't know, let's go for like a 220, 220, not too fast, not too slow, and then we'll maintain that speed, and then um, we'll get the autopilot on, fabulous. So you can see the motion makes takeoff amazing, and when you have the vibration on, you can feel the rumble of the engines, um, the buffeting of the turbulence, um, and you can also feel the runway center light. You can actually change um, that setting to be more or less intense to give you that do 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 as you go over the uh, runway center light. But today, we will not be doing that. Now, we're gonna be doing a, a right uh, traffic pattern into uh, runway 32 at the Gold Coast. I thought we were on 14, but um, there you go. Flight Simulator does whatever it wants. Fine, okay. So, let us make our crosswind turn to uh, ooh, let's keep going that way, wherever that is. Uh, that there, that's about, that's about right, that's about right. And then we'll just engage our heading mode. Ah, oh, so I live somewhere, somewhere down there, just around here. But I won't give you my exact address because I don't want no creepos coming around to steal my motion system. But here we are leveling off at 5,000 feet, just like that. So you've got our ground spoilers armed, our flaps are up, we're in a clean, this is in the climb detent, which maintains that uh, auto throttle uh, system, which is pretty awesome. You know, our engines are looking pretty healthy. 
you can see your fuel on board it's honestly crazy so you know obviously a rig like this is not cheap um, it's, it's very expensive actually and luckily I've had the opportunity to work with Cubic to actually have this motion system um, but it is well worth it if you want to build that home cockpit um, to have that kind of immersion now we are chugging along at uh, 220 knots let's have a look at our outside view beautiful love living in Australia look at that absolutely stunning now I'm using a 3070 graphics card on here which you know what isn't the best when it comes to running flight simulator but it can run this monitor which is a beast of a monitor it requires a lot of power at uh, 2k resolution so 1440p and to be honest like it looks fantastic but i am building a 4080 super build at the moment uh, with a local company here which will enable me to run this thing at 4k which i am excited about so let's get over towards the right we're going to head to Heading 140, which corresponds to... Oh, no, just switch the autopilot off. Let's put that back on. Uh, heading 140. Uh, perfecto. Now, some of you may be wondering, why am I not using the inbuilt autopilot in the uh, Honeycomb Bravo? Well, it doesn't seem to work with the Fenix. Not Fenix. FBW. Straight out of the bat. So I haven't really been using it. But I have got a mini FSU coming from um, uh, the mini cockpit people, uh, which I'm really excited to use, which obviously just take place take a center place on here now we are turning uh, our downwind leg downwind across the way from the airport now um, I don't know how heavy this aircraft is well I can see how much fuel we've got but let's go for a, an approach speed of I don't know maybe like uh, 150 odd knots that's probably reasonable you can see the coast there beautiful absolutely beautiful this is this is this is awesome and the best thing about having all these screens is that you don't really need to change your view when you're flying. You just have that view, you know, because you don't need to see the screens because of that view. Now, the only time you need to change things is if you want to look at the overhead panel and realize that our oh, landing lights are still on. That's OK. That's what we need. Yeah. Looking at the overhead panel, as you can see here, and on this big screen, it's almost lifelike. I wish it was a touch screen. So you can just go in and just twizzle stuff. But, um, but anyway, and uh, there we are in the uh, first officer's chair looking at that beautiful Australian coastline. Um, right then, I think it's probably time to think about planning our approach. Okay, we are abeam the field. Fabuloso. I think it's time to, to just drop our height a little bit. We'll go down to 3,000 feet. So we'll just put that in there and then we'll just set our descent. And uh, yeah, so our plane's just gonna do its thing. As you can feel, you can feel the whole rig tilting forward a little bit, which is um, going to do a base turn to two one zero. That's a bit of a steep turn. Got to watch our speed as well. I think we've got to start thinking about flaps and slats soon. Uh, there we go. Two one zero. Let's just pop a bit of flap in there. Fabulous. Excellent. And you know, the modification with the flight sim factory, the way you actually have to lift over the gate makes this feel so much more realistic as well. Anyway, there we are, making a lovely little descent to 3000. I think we need to speed this up. Let's get some vertical speed in here. Come on guys, I ain't got all day. We ain't got all day. Let's get flaps two involved. Well, you can hear our throttle spooling up there and it's so cool to be able to see it extending okay let's get flaps three and gear down and you'll see this do this in a second as the gear comes down oh there we go cabin crew seats for landing please <laughs> so silly and then we'll go flaps full fabulous ah, okay ground spoilers are armed let's have a look at our uh, auto brake auto brake is medium we don't really have a go around plan because uh we don't want to go around but we're going to switch off the autopilot and we're going to manually fly it from here. We are very, very high, but we're just going to take a right turn just there and maintain this speed. In fact, let's just slow down a bit. Final approach speed of 140 and hopefully we don't fall out of the sky. Now, as I said, I'm still learning how to fly the uh, FBW, <laughs> the FBW plane. So please be kind if this landing sucks. Got the runway in sight beautifully there. We are set up perfectly. So we've got gear down, we've got full flaps. 
we are ready to land. So we're actually perfect, on, bang on on the glide slope, bang on. Okay, here we go. This is what it's about. Now, if you get like One lots pad. of turbulence, oh, thank you very much, you can feed it in the, in the motion system. And the actual thing is, the motion system makes it a lot easier to have a good landing. When you're speeding up, you feed it. When you're slowing down, you can feed it. And it actually feels like One quite realistic. Like it's, um, it's super helpful. But yeah, we are established on short final. At which point the GoPro decided it was sick of my face and turned itself off. So my GoPro has just gotten too hot, which is very frustrating. It's now just switched off. But um, you can see from here, we are on our final approach. Stupid GoPro getting too hot. Let's see if it will turn back on. Ah, oh, beautiful. Too white, too red. What a lovely approach. All right, let's get our auto throttles. Well, first of all, make sure we're in the right place. And then we get our auto throttles off. Oh, a bit low there. Let's add a bit more power. Okay. Oh no, it's all gone a bit. Eat Tom. Okay. This feels like a really low approach. That feels a bit more appropriate. It was at this point that the Microsoft Flight Simulator decided to stutter, confusing my motion system and causing it to weirdly switch off. No matter, I decided to complete the landing anyway. Bring it down a touch. Oh. 50. There we go. 40, 30, 20, 10, 5. Oh, stutter. We made it. And now that was just a quick flight to show off the setup that I've got here. I've got so many more videos coming very soon. I'd love to know what you want to see. I want to answer all your questions. Leave some comments down below. Subscribe, like, and we will see you later. Cheers.